Okay, so um, for workplace 30, workplace of apprenticeship math 30, we're going to today talk about theoretical probability. So you should be on page 154 in your workbook there to follow along with me. So theoretical probability, we talked in 4.1, right, about, uh, we talked in 4.1 about um, experimental probability. And that was based on numbers that we have seen in the past, and so we can predict based on what was uh, presented to us or what was shown to have happened in the past. Theoretical probability is, in theory, what should happen. So, for example, if you're flipping a coin ten times, let's say, how many times should you get heads showing up? Yeah, you should. It should be five, right? You think five. Why? Because there's one out of two chances of getting a head, right? And, and each one is equally as likely. That's the problem with the 50-50 thing, right? 50-50. Uh, if the two choices are equally as likely, then it's 50-50. You don't know which, you know, it's 50% chance. But uh, if one is weighted a little more heavily, then of course those odds are different. Now, so theoretical. So if we have two choices, each are equally likely, then it's a 50% chance of getting either one. So theoretical probability. It's the probability that an event will occur based on the number of possible occurrences rather than the total number of events or items in a trial. So it's not based on what's happened before. For example, if we were to actually flip a coin 10 times, we might see that we would get, um, that it wouldn't be 5 and 5, right? Just that the chances are. So, so if we actually had a actual coin like this and we flipped it 10 times, um, let's keep track here. So you guys write this down, okay? I'm going to flip it once and it's a tail, okay? So just jot this down. Somebody jot this down. Let's keep track. And tell me what number we're on here too. So that's 1. Here's 2. <coughs> that's head. Okay, so we get two, two times, one and one. That's to be expected, right? Awesome. Heads, again. Two heads to one tail. Heads. Should be three heads to one tail, right? Heads. Four heads to one tail. That is not expected. Heads. <laughs> Five heads to one tail. It's a trick coin. I don't think it's a trick yeah. coin. Heads. Six <laughs> heads to one tail. Tails. Six to two, heads, seven to two, and one more, tails, seven to three. Okay, so in that experimental probability, if we were to predict flipping this coin, now you guys said it too, that's oh, a trick coin. Oh, maybe it is. Hey, maybe it is. So maybe based on experimental probability, we say this one shows up heads a lot more than tails. There's something about this coin that's different. It's weighted differently or whatever. Right? You, you, you might think that. But theoretically, I mean, this is not a trick coin, it's a regular coin. And so we should get five um, heads and five tails, right? But the problem is, is that we have such a small sample size. Remember we were talking last section about sample size? If something's really small, it's not going to give you probably the right, um, the right data. So if I were to flip this not ten times, but a thousand times, okay, it probably would be pretty, pretty close to 500 and 500. And a million times, probably be pretty close to 500,000 and 500,000, you know. So it would probably be, the more times we did it, the more the experimental probability will start to approach the theoretical. Okay, but let's take a look at uh, a deck of cards. All right, so example one. If you draw at uh, a card at random from a standard deck of 52 playing cards, what's the probability that it will be one of the following cards? Now, you have to know a little something about a deck of cards, right? There's hearts that are red, there's diamonds that are red, there are spades that are black, and there are clubs that are black, something like those. So there's four different suits, there are 13 of each, okay, there's 13 of each card, so this is all Im very important to know. Um, they're talking about face cards. Okay, so how many face cards are there for each suit? Do you know that? Because each of these uh, are, are suits. Face cards would be jack, queen, and king. Jack, queen, and king. Ace does not have a face on it. So there are three face cards per suit. Okay. 
So let's see if we can do this question with what we know so far. So it says, what from a standard deck of full 52 playing cards, what's the probability you would draw one of the following? So a heart. <coughs> well, a heart is one of the suits, right? It's one of the four suits. There are an equal number of each suit. So it would be, you could say, 13 out of 52, which is equal to 1 out of 4. So there's 13 actual hearts out of 52 actual cards, or there's one set of hearts out of four total sets of suits. All right, so this would be the reduced fraction there, and that's, that's what you see down here in the solution. So a black jack, okay, well, there's a jack of each suit. There are two black suits, so that would be two... Um, two jacks, right? Two out of 52. Or one out of half of 52 is 26. Okay? What about this one? A card other than a diamond. Well, if we take the diamonds out, we have three other suits. So a card is not a diamond. Well, what's 52 minus 13? That would be 39 out of 52. Or... 3 out of 4. Okay? So here's the solutions also in your uh, workbook as well. Let's, let's do question number 1 together and build your skills. So it says use the spinner below to calculate the probabilities. So that, again, the probability is the number of desired outcomes or favorable outcomes divided by the total number of possible outcomes. So if we're talking about this spinner, look at what this spinner has, okay? It has one, it has two uh, triangles. It has one, two circles. It has one, two hearts. It has three stars and one square. So this is not an even amount of options for each one, is it? So A, what is the probability that the spinner will stop on a star? Well, we want to find out how many stars there are, the number of stars, divided by the total number. So how many stars did we say there were? One, two, three. There are a total of three out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So three out of ten. Or that's 0 0.3, right? That's the same thing. Could we turn that into a percent as well? What, what percent is that? Thir sorry? 30, yeah, 30. I thought you said 3 there for a second. It's 30%, right? Do you guys, are you guys understanding all this? You get it? Okay. Well, the next question, is there a B? Oh, there's a B. What's the probability the, the spinner will stop on a heart? Okay, heart. Well, how many hearts are there? We said there were one, two hearts only, is that right? So what's that, what probability is that? Well, it's two out of 10, or one out of five, or 0 0.2, or 20%. So here's an interesting question. What's the probability that the spinner will stop on a square or a triangle? A square or a triangle? So if we go back to our diagram here, I'm going to highlight now. A square, here's a square, or a triangle. So really, is that everything? So you have to consider all of these that are either squares or triangles, and that is, looks like three. Three out of ten. Okay, so 0 0.3, or 30%. And you can, you can write any one of those. Okay, a standard six-sided die. So that's, you know what that is, right? I mean, that's just a cube with, and it's got the numbers kind of one to six or the dot arrangements there. So you, know, you have a one and you have something like a, maybe a three over here. And you maybe have a four here. So a standard die. What's the probability that will land on a five? Well, there are six sides. So a five is one of those six. So theoretically, you have a one out of what chance? One out of six. 
Okay, I'll give you a, I'll give you a couple of minutes to uh, work on number two and number three. Okay, so in example two, what's the probability of rolling doubles with two standard six-sided dice? Okay, so when we have two standard six-sided dice, you guys know what that looks like as well. What are the chances of rolling doubles? So that's when each die shows the same number. And uh, uh, actually, the probability of, of rolling a double, so actually on the next page, they do have this chart, which may come in handy while you're doing your questions here, okay? So take a look at this chart here. It's a dice table. So we've got one die here on all the six possibilities that it could show, and then another die, uh, all the possibilities that it could show. So dice would be plural, singular would be die. One die, two or more dice. Just, uh, just in case it sounds funny when I'm talking. All right, so doubles. So here we have the one and the one. So this square right here would represent the one from this one and the one from this one. So they actually show you the diagram of what that looks like, right? So here's doubles. Here are doubles, two and two, three and three, four and four, five and five, and six and six, okay? So how many total, um, how many total uh, rolls could we have? because we have six doubles, so th the probability, this is one way you can show this, the probability of, let me just move that down a bit, or over here maybe, probability of doubles equals, we have six opportunities for doubles out of, and how many total do we have here? Well, we would have six times six, so there are actually 36 different rolls that we could get when rolling two dice. So six out of a total of 36. That reduces to one out of six. And if you want to know what that is as a decimal, you can just go on your calculator and do one divided by six. So 0.16 or 0.17. Okay? So another way to put that is out of a hundred times, that you roll a dice, because that's 0.17, that's 17 out of 100. Every 100 times, you should get a doubles, you should get double 17 times. Or if you roll two dice six times, you should get doubles once. Okay? All right. So what does the second question say there in the example? Adele is playing a board game. If she rolls doubles on her first turn, what is the probability that she will roll doubles on her second turn? Oh, rolls doubles on her first turn. So the, I guess the question is, is does her getting doubles on the first turn affect what she gets on the second turn? That's an important question. So if you are... Um, um, if you're doing, if you're doing two, two things and the, the first thing that you did affects the second thing, you have to consider that, right? Like, for example, if you are choosing, um, there's, there's six candies. Okay, we just came through Halloween. Some of you guys got Halloween candy. If you have six different treats and your friend gets to pick one of those before you do, then the choice, him or her removing one, affects what you have left to choose from. Does that make sense? If you're if you have six treats out there and you're just picking your favorite, but you're not you're not actually taking, you're just choosing which one is your favorite, and your friend says, "Oh, I like the uh, Reese's Pieces. That's my favorite of all those," and you say, "And then it's your turn." Well, you could still pick Reese's Pieces, right? So, the the first person had six to choose from. You still have chi six to choose from. If you're actually taking one away, they have six to choose from. You now only have five to choose from. So, you know, it it does. You have to think about whether the first event or the first uh, occurrence affects the second one. Okay. All right. So if she rolls or he or I can't remember who it was, he or she rolls on their first uh, rolls a double, and then you're thinking, what are the chances of getting another one? Well, the chances aren't good because they've already rolled one. Well, the second roll is not affected by the first roll because you're all, you're starting all over again, anyways, right? So let's just read the question again. It says, Adele is playing a board game. If she rolls doubles on her first turn, what's the probability that she will roll doubles on her second turn? Well, let's re read what they say. 
This is not the same as the probability of rolling doubles twice in a row. The probability of rolling doubles a second time is not affected by the results of the first. There are still six ways to roll doubles out of 36 possible outcomes. So the probability that a, a doubles, uh, that a doll would get on her second term is still the exact same. All right? So that, the first outcome had no bearing on the second. All right. Build your skills. Let's take a look at a uh, question together here. So Alfred rolled a die twice. The first time it landed on five. What's the probability that the second one will land on five? So him getting a five the first time, does that affect what he gets the second time? It doesn't affect. Nope. Because it's a whole brand new, different circumstance, right? He can get a five the first time, and then that five he can still get the second time. So it's going to be, what's the probability then of him rolling a five? Yeah. What's the probability? It's a six-sided die. What's the probability that he will roll a five? How many fives are there on the die? There's one. How many total options are there? Five, and there's six possible chances. So one out of six. Okay? All right. A family consists of three children. The first two are boys. What's the probability that the third is a boy? So, again, the, the birth, uh, the, the first two kids, do they have an effect on, like, are they using up some kind of resources <laughs> in the mother or something? Like, does it really matter? No, it's not like you're taking candy and then you don't have as much candy left or something. So what's the probability that the third child is a boy? Yeah, it should be one out of two, right? Okay, you guys are getting the picture. I think this should be pretty straightforward. Uh, let's just quickly do example three, because this is the last um, example really in this uh, section, short section. So let's get this one done too. So example three, different type. Louise is playing a card game. She draws one card from a standard deck of playing cards. Then, without replacing it, she draws a second card. Okay. Now this is different, right? This is where now we have a different number of cards to choose from, and the first one that was drawn is not in the card deck anymore. So that does affect what the probability is for the second one. So what's the probability that the first card drawn is an ace? Okay, if all 52 are in there, how many aces do we have in, the, in a deck of cards? Anybody? How many aces in a deck of cards? Okay, so there's one ace per suit. There's one ace of hearts. There's one ace of spades. Right. So there are four aces. And out of how many total cards are there to be drawn from? 52. Okay. So four out of 52, that's one out of 13. And, uh, of course, you can write that as a decimal as well. But you don't have to know that. But 1 divided by 13, 0 0.07 or 0 0.08. Okay? So B now. This is important. The first card chosen was an ace. What's the probability the second card is a 2? All right. Now this is going to take some thinking. How many 2s do we have left in the deck after the first draw? W was a two drawn the first time? No. So there's actually still four twos left in there because the first one was an ace. So after the first draw, an ace is gone, but there are still all four twos there. So what's the probability the second is a two? Well, there's four twos in there. How many total cards are there the second draw? An ace has already been taken out, so there are how many left? Out of 52 now, there are 50 one left. Okay? Four to fifty one. Now you want to turn that into a decimal? No problem. Four divided by fifty one. Point zero seven eight or point zero eight. Okay? Now I'm rounding, probably shouldn't be rounding. This is a more exact answer and this is a more exact answer. So be careful here because it looks like they're the exact same, but they're not, right? They're not the exact same. Four to fifty two is not the exact same as four to fifty one, so um, we'll have to be careful with these decimals. Let's leave them as fractions, okay? Any questions from you guys on that? Okay, here's my own C, okay? On the third draw now, without replacing the first two cards, what are the chances of getting an ace? 
on the third draw. This is tricky. Think about it. What's the probability of getting an ace on the third draw? Anybody? What do you guys say over there? Sorry? Three out of 50? Okay. Everybody agree with that? Anybody disagree? Okay, let's see. How many aces are left? Well, one was drawn over here, so that's four minus one is three. We've got two cards out of the deck been drawn already and not replaced, so that's 52 minus two is three out of 50. Awesome. Okay? Awesome. All right. Let's do one together where we don't have the answer. Uh, number seven says Deshaun, excuse me, Deshaun drew a card from a standard deck of playing cards. It was a face card. Oh, face card. So that's the jack has a face on it, the jack guy, the queen, and the king. Right? Ace doesn't have a face, and then two to ten doesn't have faces on them. So there's three per suit. Okay, so he drew a card from a deck of cards. It was a face card. He did not put the card back in the deck. What's the probability that a second card drawn will be an ace? Okay, is an ace a face card? Nope. So how many aces are left in the deck after he drew the first one? There are all four are still in there. All four are in there. How many total cards do we have left on the second draw? 51. Yeah, very good. Four out of 51. Okay. Uh, let's do number eight together here as well. So Elizabeth works at after school daycare in PA. She's helping some of the children make beaded necklaces. A bag contains 15 red, 12 blue, and 18 white beads. What's the probability that a random chosen bead will be white? Okay, so we need to know what the probability of white is the number of white beads that we could choose from divided by the total number, right? So what's the number of white beads that we have in total? 18. What are the total number of beads? Well, you add up all these together, and what do you get? 45. For, perfect, thank you. 18 of 45. Now, can we uh, reduce that any? 9, we can divide both by 9, I think, right? And that's going to be 2 over 5. Right? So, I think that should be reduced. Okay, any questions about A, then? All right, so I'm going to let you guys do uh, the rest of B, C, and D together, as well as other questions maybe in the builder skills that you didn't quite get a chance to do. And then you have the rest of this class, which is almost a half an hour here, to finish um, all of these builder skills, plus the practice your new skills. So let's be done 4.2 for tomorrow. So you have half an hour. You should get most of this done if you work hard. All right, go for it. Mm -hmm.